Welcome to episode seven of What Can We Learn From? Today, talking about David Gilmore. Hello, this is David. Welcome to the channel. If you are new to the What Can We Learn From series, you need to know that this is not a series about learning licks note per note. It's not a series about learning songs from the artist, but rather it's a series about active listening. We're gonna to listen to very short samples, the one you see on the screen here, from David Gilmour's music, and we're going to try to find within those samples some very simple concepts and ideas that we can take and use in our own music, because at the end of the day, music is a language, and it's really the best language to tell stories. And that's what we cover on the channel. So that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna to go through these samples, talk about it, and see what we can take out of these different recordings. Let's get started with sample number one. Very short sample, but there's a lot to unpack here. Of course, this is the, the song, The Wall, uh, the second part of the song from the album, The Wall. It was released in 1979. I was two years old. It, it still sounds very modern to me. This right here, this very short phrase, minor pentatonic, that's something that we're gonna, we're gonna find throughout David's playing. Tons of players just really rely solely on the minor pentatonic scale, yet, with just a few notes, it really sounds like David. There's one thing that I want you to pay attention here. This note right here, I'll, I'll point it out. That. There's a vibrato that is coming fairly quickly, but it's pretty subtle, but it makes a huge difference in the note. Pay attention to this again. That's something that we'll hear quite a bit in David's playing. You hear it? And we can replicate that with a bar, if you, a vibrato bar, if we have, or with our fingers. We're, that's what we're gonna focus on here. This idea uses the first position of a D minor pentatonic. Here's the lick. And you hear that vibrato coming in, but it doesn't come right at the beginning. It's not, it's not this. It really lets the, the note exist first, and then it brings in that vibrato. There's something else that happens to this note. Not only does the vibrato come in a little bit after, once the, the pitch is established, but there's also an increase in the intensity of the vibrato. It's, it's, it's subtle, but you will, if you pay attention, it will start like this and then intensify as the, as the note goes. Take a listen and pay attention to that. Towards the end, it's faster in intensity. So those are the things I think we, we can take and try to apply to our own music. For that, I have a backing track here. We are in F sharp minor, and we're gonna try to use that. So we will bring in the note and then add the vibrato after and intensify the effect. Just give it a try. You heard it there? note exists first, and then adding the vibrato and intensifying it. Very subtle. Let's try the lick. No. <laughs> it works. By the way, I'll include all the backing tracks we'll use in this video for free. There's a link in the description of this video. It'll give you instant access to all of that. Okay, let's uh, take a listen to sample number two. That solo is probably one of my favorite solos ever. It's so melodic. It's the perfect blend of something that was composed, but also some freedom in there. It's, it's incredible. It's really remarkable. Again, same album. The wall. What I want us to pay attention here is the, the bend work and the pre-bend work and the release and all those things, the articulation. Because if I sing this, I'll try. La 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 na 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 na. Those are the pitches, but pay attention to the way that these notes are approached. It's in between the ba na ba da, these two notes. Da, da, Bam, pop. You hear that down the dip. Hear that again. Right? There's a bend, release, 
and then play the notes that it's releasing too. I love that kind of thing. Let me show you on the, on the close-up what I'm talking about. So here we are in D major. And it's something like this. That thing where we have the bend, release, and then play it again. It's not, no, it's release, play it. It's not something that you would catch from the first listen, but it really makes a big difference in your expression on the guitar. So again, you're playing, uh, you're targeting a note. So I'm gonna target this one, for example, on the first string 10th fret. I'm gonna bend to it, release, and then play the note again. That's the concept. Let's try this over this backing track. We are in A major this time. I'm gonna jam a little bit over this. And then at some point I'm gonna bend the note, release, and play the note I'm releasing to. That's the idea. Makes a big difference. Let's listen to sample number three. This is the same song. The solo happens a little bit later in the song. Classic, very bluesy. Here it's the delivery of the notes. It's not all static. It's not all 16th notes or eighth notes. There's a speed up at the end in the delivery of the notes here. Pay attention to this. The, land, the, the, the last part there. Ending that phrase really with a, a fast little thing and then silence. That silence is important. The fast thing is important too. And I'll tell you why right after this. Because it gives you time to, time to digest what's being told to you musically. Now, did David know exactly that that is why there is a silence after that? I think subconsciously, yes. Subconsciously, yeah, subconsciously, yes. I think so. Maybe he didn't plan it. Okay, I'm gonna leave a space here for the listener to, to, to digest what I'm telling him. It's, it's instinct. Just hold on, I'm talking to you here. Um, if I give you a, a, an idea or I tell you something, okay, the, for example, the minor pentatonic scale is made of five notes. Little silence there, right? So that you can, Digest. That digestion is, imp is important in uh, David Gilmour's music and his solos. It's not a continuous flow of notes. There's some silence in, silences in there between each phrases. Just time to breathe. That's been a recurring thing in, in these series, right? In the What Can We Learn From series. All those players, at some point or another, there are some breaths that are taken that, uh, that exist with the silence to almost mimic uh, vocal quality in those lines. And I feel that a lot of those lines might have been born from singing them and then replicating uh, them on the instrument. Now, sometimes the silences are, are not purely silences. The notes might last a little bit longer, like it's the case here in this solo. See that last note lasted a little bit longer, but you really have a, a, a clearly um, short, self-contained idea. Ba -ba -da. That's it. One, two, three. Just three real important pitches in this idea and that's enough. I didn't even have to tell you the name of the song. You recognize it, right? Money. The shortness of the phrase, the self-containedness of the phrase, the fact that the phrase has a clear beginning, a middle, which is one note in this case, and end, it's really self-contained. That's, I think, the mark of a solo that will resonate with a lot of people because they're simple phrases that you can remember, sing, and by singing them in your mind, uh, it's almost like you are imprinting in your mind what is being told to you, what is being heard, and that automatically um, automatically makes it uh, a classic, right? Simple things like that. Let's listen to this one more time and then maybe we'll try to apply it. Yeah, very, very sh simple short phrase. You hear another one later in the, the same solo. 
That's very self-contained. Ba ba da 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 da. Played an octave higher. I can't sing that high. Let's try to build something using that simplicity of uh, delivery of phrases. Well, let's try this over this backing track. Self-contained phrases, very simple. Three, four notes are enough. If I just played that, you'd be okay. You're not expecting something else, right? As opposed to maybe something like this. You're kind of waiting for something, right? Three simple phrases. And then the breath, silence, you have time to digest that. Like that. Now let's add the other two concepts we talked about. Adding the vibrato after the note establishes itself and building that vibrato up in intensity. Something like that. And then the bends, you know, pre-bending, releasing and playing the note again. Let's try that. You know what? We need to go back to the first song we heard. There's something that David does. We haven't covered it yet. We have to. It's this. That bend, that's a two full step bend. So it's a pretty, pretty wide bend. And he does it a lot. And we can too. And it's going to add a lot to our expression. For this, David starts here on the second string, 13th fret. Remember, we are still in that D minor pentatonic, D Dorian. So he's doing a, a full step bend from the 13th reaching to the 15th. And then back to the 15th or to that pitch. And then we're gonna bend that 13th fret to sound like the 17th fret. That's a wide bend, right? And we can use that. And we're gonna do that over our A major backing track here. And we're gonna to try to find some places where, where we can reach two full frets above within that A major scale. So we can do that maybe from, um, well, we can do that from the root to reach the, the major third. So instead of doing the root here on the first string fifth fret, that bend is gonna be very difficult. If I'm bending, you know, uh, frets that are too close to the neck, I might break a string or something. So I'm gonna move this root right here. I'm gonna move it maybe right here on the second string, 10th fret, and we'll give it a try. So I'm gonna bend two frets higher. That's feasible. And then I'm gonna to try to bend it to here. <laughs> so I really have to grab the guitar of the neck this way with my thumb. I was trying to reach for this. Ah, I can't do it. But you get the idea, right? There are so many more things that I want to tell you about David Gilmore's playing. We just touched the surface here, but I'm going to stop this video and I'll, I might do a follow-up if you'd like. Download the backing tracks. They are free in the charts. The link is below. And if you want to continue exploring other very simple concepts, and applying them to your instruments, you should click this video. That'll take you to the playlist with all the what you can learn from episodes. I'll meet you right here. Grab the tracks below. Go listen to Pink Floyd's music. There's so much to discover. Thanks for watching. I'll meet you right here.